Anyone watching this will consider it pornography. Fuck it, you will be in it. Yes, sir. So, Peter, how Sunday has been this year? It's been great, but this year, I mean, I. I I'm not sure if it's a record, but I think there was about 15, 16 films, feature films, screening here with queer content, about the same with queer filmmakers. Um, there's 16 films in uh, competition for the U.S. Dramatic Prize, and, and three of them are directed by openly gay women, which is quite something. So what have been some of the highlights? There's been many. I mean, one of the great things is, of those films, most of them were actually really, really great. Um, there's um, John Krikitis, uh, who is a first-time filmmaker, he made a film called Kill Your Darlings, which is based on uh, the relationship between um, uh, Allen Ginsberg and uh, uh, Jack Kerouac, where they met in, in the 1940s at Columbia University. And it has uh, Daniel Radcliffe playing Allen Ginsberg, and there's actually some, some pretty hot uh, gay sex in that film. Are you a James Franco fan? Because he's all over Sundance. Yeah, it was a really big year for James Franco at Sundance, and he had some really you know, interesting projects that he came here with. I mean, uh, he had a small role as Hugh Hefner, um, in the Linda Lovelace biopic, um, Lovelace, which, I mean, it was a small role, but it sort of set the tone for his presence here in general, which was with two um, other films that mostly dealt with pornography. Um, he produced a film called Kink, and it basically is a, is a documentary that uh, details the, the sort of work environment behind BDSM pornography website, uh, kink.com. And uh, um, secondly, and, and I think this film got even more attention, was uh, Interior Leather Bar, which he co-directed with Travis Matthews, who uh, was on the queer film circuit last year with the film called I Want Your Love. That's right. Um, Travis, Travis and James co-directed this film, and it's basically they, you know, the 1980 film Cruising, which was very controversial. It starred Al Pacino, and to make an R rating, so it was originally rated X, um, they had to cut 40 minutes of explicit uh, BDSM sex from the film. So... Travis and James basically decided to make this film where they reimagined what those 40 minutes would be like. And it's very explicit um, and uh, sold out every screening here and was sort of the talk of the town. It's, it's fascinating. And, and uh, you know, because of James's relationship to the film, it's gotten some really mainstream press attention. So, I mean, it's, it's James Franco apparently is the new king of sort of sex positivity. It's, it's fascinating. Oh, don't, don't show gay sex. Don't do that. That's the fucking devil. I'm just saying. That at the, at the end of the day, anyone watching this will consider it pornography. Fuck it, you will be in it. Uh, what are some other highlights? Um, there's quite a few. Uh, uh, David Sedaris, uh, who has always resisted having people adapt his work, has finally allowed someone to adapt uh, one of his short stories. Uh, it's called COG, which stands for Children of God or, or Child of God. Um, and it, it's an excellent, excellent film. It's directed by a, a second time filmmaker, um, Kyle Alvarez. Mm -hmm. And David Sedaris was here and seemed quite impressed by the film. And it also has some fairly um, hilarious gay content um, involving, there's one scene involving a, a whole bunch of dildos that uh, I'm sure will get people talking once the film sort of gets out and about. Now, one of the other films that I, I, I'm kind of curious about because I've been reading a little bit about uh, Sundance is Concussion. You know, a lot of the films that I've mentioned or all the films I previously mentioned are very much about male sexuality, but um, Concussion sort of definitely makes up for it. It has a, a lot of, of uh, really hot lesbian sex in it. It's, it. it's a fascinating film. It sort of takes sort of the themes of the kids are all right and sort of just makes them very, very much more explicit. Um, basically, it's about this, this housewife who's married to a woman in, in suburban New York. And uh, she has two kids and she's, you know, all of a sudden sort of wakes up after being hit in the head by a ball that her kid accidentally throws at her and has this sort of revelation where she feels like she's, you know, been stuck in this sort of heteronormative, boring world that she created for herself. So she starts um, prostituting herself um, as, as a lesbian prostitute. Like every year, uh, uh, films at Sundance get a lot of press and a couple of features are picked up and queer filmmakers in particular get some spotlight. And then the films inevitably come out, they flop. Is it a vacuum? Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes it really feels like it is. Last year, there were two films uh, that I saw here at Sundance that ended up being, you know, quite critically acclaimed and had a lot of promise, um, Keep the Lights On and, and How to Survive a Plague. AIDS is now the leading cause of death. Demonstrators blocked access to buildings. A coalition of gay groups came to shut down the FDA. This government has the resources to deal with the AIDS epidemic and they won't do it unless we force them. Uh, both those films ended up making very little money. Um, I mean, How to Survive a Plague did get an Oscar nomination, and, and there's definitely been a lot of attention paid around both those films. But, you know, they made under a million dollars in America, which is 
not not a lot at all. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is a vacuum, and I don't know where the audiences are necessarily. If they're not coming out to see you know those two films, which are very strong examples of filmmaking. So we'll have to see. Maybe this special will, will reverse the trend a little bit. That's great. Well, thanks, Peter. No problem. Take care. Bye. Bye.